everybody, what's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue, and I'm back for Black Ink Crew Chicago. I'm bored. I'm gonna tell you the truth. I'm not entertained. I'm not entertained. No, I'm not, okay? This episode was like, blah. Okay, first of all, it starts off with Ryan and Kit Kat, Lil Kitty, going to get an alligator pool boy. Okay, they got an alligator pool boy. Like, it really does just taste like chicken, just a little tougher. Um, it's good. It's not like, you know, it depends on how people season it, just like anything else. But, yeah, it's kind of like wild game in a way that it's a little tougher than chicken. But it's good. I've had I've had several fried alligator, you know, during my lifetime. Okay, rabbit, dill, child, my uncle honey. We ate, we ate everything. So, Kitty needed a break from New York. We know what happened. You got fired. Okay, and she feel like, how do I feel about getting fired on my day off from 1 13th? Them, okay, 1 13th, okay? It's more habitable under the Brooklyn Bridge in a box, okay? Forget them with they hole in the wall looking at. Okay, she is over them. She's upset about how everybody responded. And Ryan is like, how you lost all your friends though? And she was like, I lost all my friends. Yeah, how you lost all your friends? She tells him it don't even matter, okay? Charmaine offered her a job over at her shop. Ryan thinks that would be a good idea. You know, I think Ryan does want to see Kitty a little bit more. Even if he's not serious about her, just having her close enough to see what's up, yeah, it might be worth it. But then again, it might not. Ryan, you have a track record of getting yourself in trouble with females. So, y'all, we get a little extra from Prince, all right? Him and Fly are at the shop. You know, they're the only ones that's still in Chicago tattooing right now. Everybody else is here in New Orleans for Charmaine Mama funeral. And then they stay after the funeral to go on bourbon and get drunk and party a little bit more before they come on back. Ryan kept the house for a few, you know, extra days, all right? So, yeah, Prince is talking to us about his baby mother and how she didn't see it for him after he got arrested. He still Still got this case pending that happened two years ago and the case is still pending because he keeps getting his court date pushed back he obviously must have a regular degler schmegler public defender because i can't imagine why he wouldn't have rights to a speedy trial out here like how long y'all gonna wait to, to get this over with shit glooming over people head and all of that is too much but he doesn't even want to talk to his BM about it because he doesn't want that to turn her off. That was the whole reason why they broke up in the first place. So if she finds out that this case is still looming in the background, she may not want to deal with him because she ain't never want to be a drug dealer girlfriend. That wasn't ever her plan. So we see him and the baby mama and the baby, cute little boy, go on a date, okay? They go to the sugar factory. They pick out candy. They get huge, nice-looking drinks, you know, probably eat some lackluster fried food. I've never been to the sugar factory. I don't know. We have the munch factory out here, and it is delish. We going tomorrow. I can't wait. I'm dying for some of them nachos. But anyway, they are definitely rekindling their little relationship, you know, I like how regular degler schmegler she is. Like, I get tired of seeing these girls who are obviously made for TV, <laughs> okay, uh, on reality shows. Like, sometimes I want to see a girl that got a regular roller rack. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I want to see a girl who got her glasses on and didn't take them off and get contacts because she was worried about the glare from uh, the light kit that's going to be in front of them when they taping, reflecting off her glasses. You know what I'm saying? The things you have to do. But Prince love her. He want them to be together. Well, I hope y'all get a chance to be together because it's seeming a little, you know, glum. He went to his lawyer's office and the lawyer basically said, even though he and the lawyer felt like constitutionally he was searched illegally, the judge didn't feel that way. So they offered him a plea deal. He pled guilty. He get two years in jail and then he get out and he on parole. I said, why y'all can't just give this man probation? But the gun had the numbers filed off it. So that's a felony charge right there, I think. Okay, or a misdemeanor. Either way, he had enough charges to where he was looking at like upwards to what? Three to 13 years in jail. And they offered him two. You had the gun. 
the serial number was filed off the gun. You did it. So it does seem like it might be in his best interest to take the plea deal. But two years in jail for getting pulled over with a gun in a car and you ain't even really do anything. Like, that's just insane to me. I know how he feel. I really feel like if he hasn't had any priors, why can't y'all just give the, 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 the boy some probation? Like, really? You want to send somebody to jail for two years for having a gun in Chicago? I understand. They're trying to be hard and tough on crime and all of that. But ultimately, you're going to put somebody that was a nonviolent offender for real. Like, he wasn't really doing anything. Just had a gun. So, y'all going to put that man in jail. And what could possibly happen in jail? You know, like so many things. <laughs> he could become a worse sir person in jail. Okay? So, it's just kind of like, is it really worth it? Like, I just... I, I don't like that. I don't agree with that. But what's most important is that he does not get caught up again. Because if he gets caught up again, well, then they're going to throw the book at him. They real serious about these gun charges. So y'all, Four and Don have a lunch setting meeting <laughs> in a restaurant with the prospective or possible BM and her little girl. I don't know these people's name. I'm not trying to remember them, Okay. And Four is trying to be nice and calm and everything, but Don is just like, check this out. This is my brother, okay? And I'm just trying to make sure that nobody's taking advantage of my brother. So, bow, here you go. Let's let's get this DNA test popping. Let's see what's going on here. Let's find out what's really going on. And look, it may have been rough. It may not have been the setting that the baby mama, the possible baby mama was comfortable with. But at the same time, I felt like get the damn DNA test done so we can get this out the way. Why are you trying to prolong scenes and prolong meetings with this man without finding out the truth? Girlfriend got upset. She didn't like Don's energy. He had too much mouth. I said... Now, when did you go from being classy based to hood ratchet ghetto baby mama? When did that happen? It just happened all of a sudden. Her attitude was so stank. And yes, Don was coming off kind of rough, but I wasn't mad at him because Four is the type of person that will allow people to take advantage of him. And when you somebody like Don and you know people take advantage of your brother because of his kind of go by the seat of his pants personality, like he's always getting pulled one way or another by a stronger personality. So Don had to be there to make sure that this gets done. We're not giving people TV time when they out here playing with the paternity of a child, okay? And it wasn't no disrespect to the little girl. I don't even think the little girl took it that way. She reached for the box. Her mama was the one that got upset and said, uh-uh, we not taking this test. Let's go. Get up. Get up. She go outside. Four and Don are still sitting there, okay? Don shaking his head the whole time. See, why she don't want to just take the test? What's wrong with her? I said, <laughs> okay, you asking good questions all, sir. Because that's my same question. Why not just take the test? The producers got to be outside talking to the mama. She's upset because they did it at a restaurant. Well, where was y'all supposed to meet at? You know, and you can hear one of the producers telling her that the DNA test will get sent to a viable DNA testing site. And in two weeks, you will find out if he's the pappy or not. What is the problem? Take the test. I know you're not happy about the setting, but y'all are on a reality show. Nobody knows each other so where else were we supposed to meet at to have this conversation at somebody's house eh, I, if I was four I wouldn't want y'all at my house period where else was we supposed to meet at okay so yeah I, I, I understood why it was at you know a damn near empty restaurant but either way, girl, you putting all your information on a reality TV show. So does it really matter for the passerbys in the restaurant to know your info? <laughs> Whatever. So they take the test eventually. And I just thought it was just a, a very telling moment when they were walking out the door. And the girl, the little girl was telling her mama, you supposed to be being a bigger person. And she tells her daughter to stay in the child's place. Ma'am, if you knew who the father of your child was, your daughter could stay in a child's place and wouldn't have to be the adult in the situation, okay? If you were being an adult, if you knew who her daddy was, she wouldn't have to be out of a child's place because you would have been protecting her the entire time instead of putting her in this shit show of a situation for some TV time. The fact that she's 16, 17 years old and you still don't know who her daddy is 
Come on, sis. You think that don't say a lot about you as a person? But whatever. Four hugs the little girl before she leaves. And that's that. We'll find out in two weeks. So back in New Orleans, Jess is so excited to go on bourbon. Bourbon? <laughs> she couldn't say bourbon. <laughs> like bourbon street, bitch. Bourbon. It's a drink. It's an alcohol. Bourbon. She's so excited about the funeral. Of course, she's never experienced a funeral like they do down here in New Orleans. It's more so a party. Most funerals down here are a good time, tell you the truth. Weddings and funerals are forte. Just saying. Just mentions to Drea and Plug about Charmaine offering Kit a job. And they like, what does Kit do? Nobody knows. Nobody really knows. She's just there to look pretty and act like she's doing stuff. I think that's what it is. Like, we need somebody that's just going to be cute on camera. So, Ryan, Charmaine, and Neek show up to the house that they're all staying in. Charmaine thanks everybody for coming and being there for her during her time of need. She's going to go back to the house to beat up for her dad. But she wants everybody else to drink up. Okay, go out in New Orleans. Have a good time. All right, feel the vibes. Be, you know, Nola down out you. Go, go have a good time. So, that's what everybody intends on doing. They go, I think they might have been at Grand Isle or somewhere where they could be on the balcony and they was drinking. And y'all, Jess is, is a loud, goofy drunk. <laughs> Look at my breast. <laughs> my breast are everywhere. <laughs> I was just like, wait a fucking minute. <laughs> First of all, even though Kitty is bougie and stuck up, I still understood where Kitty was coming from. Like, girl, you don't calm your drunk ass down. First of all, chill out. Okay, she's like, obviously Kitty wasn't here to enjoy herself like I was. It's like, you may have been here to enjoy yourself, but there is an area to which you start to embarrass yourself. And I told y'all she liked Ryan. She was all in his face. And Kitty, you acting like you and Ryan aren't a thing, but you seemed very jealous about the way drunken Jess was all in Ryan's face. You was getting the attitude every time she got close. Oh, Ryan, look at my breasts. Uh -huh. They're all over the place. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was too much. I did understand how Kitty felt. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> I was like, oh, girl, you embarrassing yourself in front of Ryan. Stop. <laughs> girl. But she doesn't care. She doesn't care about embarrassing herself. I said, you know what? If you don't care, neither do I. You and Charmaine must get along when y'all will get drunk together. Because Charmaine is like that too. <laughs> Goofy ass when they drunk. You know, don't care that they embarrassing themselves. So the next morning, Ryan did not return to the house with the rest of the folks, all right? But Jess, Drea, and Plug are talking about their first impressions of Kit again. I'm like, didn't we have this conversation? But whatever, you know, I guess since they finally went out with her, it just felt like she feels like she's better than everybody. And Drea recalls at the funeral trying to give Kit a hug, you know, under the circumstances. And she was just kind of like, oh, oh, don't mess my hair up. It's like... <laughs> It's like, girl, ain't nobody gonna tug your wig off. Calm down, kid. You know, like, yeah, she does give like a uh type of energy. And it is probably because she knows that she's pretty. Like, oh, I have this pretty girl. I'm better than everybody air about themselves. You know, I, look, I don't even care. Like, okay, kid, you could feel like that. But at the end of the day, you have embarrassed yourself and look dumb just like every other female on this show. So Ryan comes in and Jess is like, where were you? Where were you? Where were you? It's like, girl, mind your business. Why are you asking where he was? Why do you care? That's not your man. Oh, you like him, huh? He said he don't remember where he was. He was hit last night. I said, oh, did you go and hang out and spend a night and fall asleep inside or around Kitty? Mm. Inquiring minds do want to know. So Kitty meets with Charmaine, who looks tired and overwhelmed. She had to plan the funeral, and now she has to get back to work, and it's just a lot right now. She's still trying to be there for her dad, but she has to get back to business. So she and Kitty sit down, and Kit offers her help. And Charmaine is like, that's the real type of help that I need right now. It's somebody that's going to help me answer all these damn emails. Now, I feel like there's some confusion going on here. Charmaine seems to want Kitty to be a personal assistant for the time being but kitty seems to think she's gonna show up at second city and be a manager charmaine why you think that you don't need to talk to jess about that 
Like, that's problematic. And you can already tell this situation is not thought out. And Charmaine just feels like because she's going through what she's going through, she should just get her way. But she's handling this all wrong and just should have been said something to her. But I understand under the circumstances, you don't want to make it about you in the business when Charmaine is grieving her mother. She's pregnant. Maybe she shouldn't say anything right now. But Charmaine is making too many moves without having conversations with Jess that can end up being problematic for their business. How you feel like you just going to bring somebody in as a manager into y'all shop without talking to your partner? I don't understand that. Like that just seems like you stepping on toes and don't care. That's not cool. Kitty made sure to talk about Jess and all her drunkenness and how she was all in Ryan's face. Charmaine says she doesn't understand why Kitty is kind of singling Jess out. You know, everybody was probably out getting drunk. Um, but the point is, there is obviously a problem here, Charmaine, and you're just going to ignore it. And <laughs> just like, okay, all right, Charmaine, girl. <laughs> oh, Lord. Who gave all the money to open the business? Ryan talks to Don over FaceTime, okay? And he discusses with him how awkward it was, but how he handled it like a G when he saw all of the various females that he's cheated on Rachel with while on the show. Ariel, Danielle, Kat, Kit. <laughs> okay, I almost cheated with or just stuck his finger inside. Who knows? All right, trying to see if there's a chocolate or caramel filling. And then we see four ironically doing a tattoo for a proud father who wants to get his little girl tattooed on his arm. Four is a really good tattoo artist, but I felt like there was too much shadow on that little girl's face. It made it look like a grandma slash little girl. Before it talks to us about realizing that he doesn't want to be alone, he feels alone, he wants a family. He wants a family, y'all. And I understand that. I really do. But you got to have a woman first. <laughs> okay, or whatever you want to have. Because, you know, let some of y'all tell it the man gay. I don't know if he is. I don't really care. All I know is if you want a family, then you need to focus on having real connections and relationships with people. And I feel like four can sometimes be very shallow with the way he handles his relationships. So everyone goes to get beignets, okay? Ryan, Jess, Drea, Plug, and Kitty. And Kitty takes this opportunity to let them know that she's coming in as manager. And she's there to make sure that Charmaine has hired the right people for Second City. And Jess is like, these are also my people. So Charmaine and I definitely need to have a conversation. I'm like, yeah, y'all do. Y'all need to talk because Kit coming in wrong as far as I'm concerned. You're supposed to be coming in like, I'm just here to help while Charmaine out I'll just facilitate whatever y'all need through her to try to make things a little bit easier on her and on y'all for her not being there like you supposed to come at it from that standpoint you're not supposed to come at people like you about to come in and wreck shop as if you have any pause for second city girl keep going away from me with this okay you know her energy was just wrong her energy has been wrong this entire trip like get your life get some dick I don't know work it out though Anyway, that was Black Ink Crew Chicago. I hope you guys enjoy the review. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I love you. I'll see you in the next one. Mwah!